Hey everyone, Mary from SVG Cuts here with some really fun Christmas projects. And um, right now we're actually getting a little close to Christmas, so I thought it would be nice to have some little treat boxes because I don't know about you, but I'm kind of wrapped up with um, cards and I'm getting wrapped up with, you know, gifts and everything. But as far as just some little treats to give to, um, you know, if you go get your hair done or your nails done or you go, you know, if you go somewhere and you want to take something to someone just to say, hey, thanks for, you know, everything, Merry Christmas or Happy Holidays, or to your neighbors or something. I think it's a nice neighbor gift because um, maybe you don't want to start a whole like gift exchange thing, but it's nice to just say, hey, Merry Christmas, I was thinking of you. Here's a cute little, you know, treat just for you. So these are super easy and <clears throat> actually last night I whipped up four of them, probably in like 30 minutes, maybe less. I was at the store and I got some really nice um, chocolate covered pretzels and turtles and just really super yummy stuff and I put those in there and I whipped it up so fast and I just happened to have these um, little bags around. They're about four inches wide by nine inches tall. Anything similar is going to work inside the box to hold your treat or if you want to wrap it up with some, um, some cling wrap that would work too. So we also have a cute little box here and the cute thing about this is that it has real stitching on the front. So to do that I uh, use some baker's twine that's really festive and if you don't want to do that you can look in your extras folder and there's um, a plain mitten lid in there too. So we also have our cute little gingerbread man shaped box which of course would be adorable for some kind of little small small gift whether it's you know a food an edible treat or some kind of smaller treat and then when I was at the craft store I noticed that they had these um, pint-sized uh, mason jar ball jars whatever you want to call them and I was thinking what kind of paper project could I do that would be cool with that and I thought it would be really fun to make a make it into a snowman so I made a snowman head and the ribbon is just kind of covering up where the head meets the jar but the cool thing is that the head just fits perfectly onto the jar. And I think it looks really cute with uh, some white treats in there to make it look like a snowman. And then his little arms are just some wire from the floral section of the craft store. But I think you could also use regular wire or um, maybe pipe cleaners or something. So finally, this one is kind of extra special to me because it's, it's just like something that I used to have when I was a little girl and every year for Christmas my mom, you know, she would get out the Christmas decorations but she would also always put this in my room because it was mine and my grandma had made it for me. The one that she made was actually ceramic. She painted it and fired it and everything. Um, but it's, it's very similar and um, it just holds 12 standard size candy canes with a little bit of extra room in there. So if you just want to leave it out as a cute decoration, um, I mean, I don't really sit around and, and eat candy canes. It's probably more of like a kid thing. So if you have kids or grandkids coming around or um, it's just cute, even if you're not going to eat them. So um, yeah, at the store, just all the candy canes are about the same size. And I made a little wiggle room. So if they're a little bit, tiny bit larger, that'll work too. And if you're into the health food thing, at the health food store, they even have some without uh, food coloring. It's like dyed with beets or something. And they're really good too. So those are my projects. I hope you love them. I've got my pieces cut out to show you how they go together. And the paper that I use this time is by Simple Stories. It's really cute. It's called Cozy Christmas. Totally love it. But like I always say, whatever kind of paper you have in mind is going to look awesome. And let's get started. So first for our treat box, it's nice and simple. The main part of it is just two pieces like this. And I think whether or not, like for this one, for example, I did not glue the panel on the front. This one has a panel, this one does not. So it just depends on your paper, if you think it looks pretty enough without it. I went ahead and glued a panel on this one and my little tag. <clears throat> and then all we wanna do is glue this little side piece onto this side tab of the larger piece. And of course, just carefully line it up and glue it on. And then we can put glue on this side tab as well. And close it up. Then all that's left to do is put glue on all three of these tabs 
and fold the bottom into place. And then your box is done. And the top just, you know, can open and close. And inside, if you want to use, <coughs> I have these um, four inch wide cellophane bags, but anything similar would work as well as just wrapping up your treat with some cling wrap. Next for our gingerbread man box, I've got the lid here taken off and the side pieces here, which are numbered and your machine will have cut a number into the side of each piece. And I just, for this video, I went ahead and darkened that in with a marker so you could see it. And then we've got the top of the lid and you can tell it's the top versus this piece because it has the little face cut into it and the buttons so that it's easy to tell where to place your little, you know, um, bling or whatever. Then we've got a plain piece, which is the interior part. So we're going to set the lid aside, the top of the lid. And as you can see, I also went ahead and glued my icing as well as the hands and the feet into place and his smile. And then what we want to do is you want to put down some kind of scrap pa paper or scrap something to protect your work surface because we're going to get some glue all over the place in just a minute here. So as you can see, it's scored in two places. Let's take a look here. Where is my other score line? It is, oh, right here next to the three. So actually, <coughs> for this score line, we want that to be a valley fold, so it's folding towards you, as well as on piece number one, we want that to be folded this way. And those are the only two areas that are folded except for the, the teeth at the bottom of each piece. So I put some glue on the side tab of piece number one, and I'm gonna glue piece number two right to it. And there's a tiny little score line right here, just to help you see where you're gluing it, if that helps. Same thing with piece number two here. I'm gonna put some glue on the side tab and glue that into place. And again, there's a tiny little guideline there on piece number two to help you line it up. And then we're going to close it up by putting glue on piece number three and gluing that into place. So now, if your, your teeth are not already folded in, you want to go ahead and fold all those in all the way around. <clears throat> and then the two places where it is folded, where we folded it in the valley fold, that's going to be where his head goes. So you can kind of tell where it's going. So what we're going to do actually is take this piece. For me, it doesn't really matter which side. It's, uh, it's a symmetrical shape, so it doesn't matter. And we want to put a line of glue all the way around, right up to the edge of the shape. Going all the way around. And this is why I've got some, some scrap paper laid down here. So I've got, I've got it folded here. And it's also folded on the other side. You just want to push Press his head into place and then kind of quickly work your way around his body. <clears throat> and as I'm working, I'm kind of losing some of my glue as I go. So I'm going to have to add some more glue probably in just a minute. But we've, we've already gotten most of his head and his arm and his side into place. I'm going to add some more glue. And I'm going to continue working my way around his foot. And I'm just sliding it so that those teeth go underneath. And I'm pushing down from the inside to get it into place. And I just want to keep working my way around. doing the same thing all the way around. And it fits perfectly, so as long as you just work your way around the shape, 
you will be good. And I'm kind of rushing a little bit here in this video, but when you're making yours, you can take your time a little bit more and make yours even more precise if you would like. And it's okay if you get <clears throat> if you get glue on the front of your gingerbread man here because that's going to be covered up. So at this point, if you've got any little teeth that are not glued on, you can just go around and glue those into place. Make sure that you've got it you've got it taking hold, and then you can go ahead and glue the front of your lid into place. So you just want to cover this with glue and pop this right into place. Then you can go ahead and <clears throat> flip it over and there's four liners and two of them are slightly smaller than the others. So you want to take the two that are slightly smaller. Those are going to be for the the bottom of the box, so set those aside. Take the two slightly larger ones. I don't think it really matters that much, but you want to put the two slightly larger ones, glue those inside the lid, just to add some strength and stability to your lid. Then for the bottom, it goes together the exact same way, but these side tabs look slightly different. They're just, uh, they're a little bit taller, but again, you're going to do the same thing. You're just going to glue piece one. You're going to glue piece two onto piece one and then piece three. The same exact thing that we did before to create the bottom of your box. And then you can glue the final two liners into place to add some more strength. So finally, for the cute little bow, the little bow on our snowman or our gingerbread man, um, all you want to do is put some glue behind it there and glue it into place just like this. You just form the shape of the bow. And then once your glue takes hold, <coughs> you want to glue this little wraparound piece into place like this. And then just glue that right onto your cute guy. Next for our um, candy cane house, we've got the pieces laid out here and I went ahead and glued the decorative panels onto the side and the front and the other side and the back. And these cute little trim pieces here go on the side that look like candy canes. So if you have striped paper, it looks really cute for those. And then we've got the roof here in the bottom and then I've also got some roof panels that we'll put on at the end. So the first thing we wanna do is <coughs> You want to make sure that all of your pieces on your roof are folded and ready to go. And then we can put some glue just here on this little um, <coughs> small triangular tab here in the front. It doesn't matter which side is the front or the back on the roof. And we'll just get started by gluing this right into place. So of course you want to make sure it's nice and evenly lined up so that everything falls into place. And then I'm going to put a dot of glue on each little each little tab here. And then I'm going to work my way <clears throat> down the curve, just kind of working each little tab into place. Pretty easy. It's a nice, simple, little gentle curve. And it, it's nice and easy to just put those guys right into place. So we're just going to do the same thing on the other side. So go ahead and put glue on all those tabs and do the same exact thing. So I've got my front of my house glued onto the roof and the next thing I want to do is put some glue on this side tab of the front here and glue my side into place.
And then, then we're going to glue the, the back of the house into place the same exact way that we glued the front into place. So we're going to start by putting some glue on this top tab here and gluing that into place. And then you can just go ahead and finish gluing the back into place the same way that we glued the front into place. So I've got my back of my house glued into place and now I can just put some glue on this side tab of the back here and take my final side and glue that into place. And like I frequently say, when I make my, my how-to video here, I'm kind, of, I'm kind of rushing the process a little bit, so mine is not as perfect as yours is going to be, but that's okay. You can take your time a little bit more, and then we can put our side into place here. And then we can glue this final side into place. So now all that's left to do is <coughs> put some glue all over these four tabs here and glue the bottom into place. And at this point, if you would like to add something um, inside my finished house, I put some glass beads just to weigh it down a little bit. I don't think it's necessary, but you can if you want to. And then go ahead and glue the bottom into place. Then we can flip it over and <coughs> um, you just want to take a look at where it lines up. There we go. This one lines up here, so you want to glue that on the side as well as on the other side. And then you can glue this cute little piece <coughs> into the top and then add your candy canes and you're all good. Next for our mason jar snowman, I've got the pieces laid out here and it's, uh, it's a 10 sided shape, his head is. So we've got 10 pieces that look like this except one of them has a little slit cut in it for his little carrot nose. So we're going to start by gluing these all side to side. And it doesn't matter what order you glue them in because they're all the same except for the one. And you just want to work your way up one tab at a time. And just glue those together. So that's all I'm going to do. Just the same exact thing with all ten pieces. And just glue them together side to side. So go ahead and do that with the rest of the pieces. So I've got all 10 of my pieces <coughs> glued together here and I'm just closing up this final seam. And it's the same, same process, just closing it up. And I somehow got red ink all over this. Not, not a smooth move, but it's okay. Now we can take our carrot and it has a tiny little score line on each piece. So you want to fold that at the score line and then put a little glue just in the triangular shaped area of the carrot and glue the two pieces together. And then we can feed it through the slit and we just want to open that up, kind of like a brad, like how you'd open a brad up with some glue on, on either side of it to uh, keep it in place. And mine is mine's being screwy, but you get the idea. So as you can see, the inside of the nose is just, it's opened up like a brad and it's glued down. So next we can take the large piece of the hat here and there's a side tab on the end. So we just want to wrap that around and glue that into place. And then we want to take the brim of his hat and just get these tabs out of the way. And we just want to set this 
in place. And then I'm going to put some glue on just one of these tabs. And I'm going to grab the hat and I'm gluing that tab right onto the inside of the hat. And the brim of the hat's not going to get glued, it just kind of gets held into place by the head and the hat. So I'm going to jump across to the opposite side and do the same thing. So I've got glue on that tab, and then I just want to fold that up inside the hat and glue that into place. So now I'm just going to do the same thing from the inside. I'm just putting a few dots of glue on the rest of those head tabs. And I'm just folding them up and gluing them right into place inside the hat. And once again, you can totally take your time with yours and be a little bit more careful and precise than you're seeing me be right now. But mine doesn't look too bad. It's actually doing pretty good. So now, we just want to cover these tabs with glue and glue this into place. And then you can add your, you can glue your hat band around and glue that into place. You want to make sure it's really flush with the bottom of the brim so it fits right. And then if you want to add your, your little eyes and your holly, these just fold in half and get glued on there. And then it just fits right on top of your jar, which is nice. And then once you get the head onto the jar, you can add, uh, add your scarf. But before you add the scarf, here's what I used for the arms. In the floral section of the craft store, it's called cloth stem wire. And I just happened to have it laying around, so I thought it would make a nice arm. So for that, all I did was I wrapped it around, and then I twisted it like a nice tight, tight little twist over and over. It looks kind of cool if it's kind of a little bit messy. And then once you get it as long as you would like, you can trim it off and then it looks like a cute little hand. So I just did that, I just did that twice and then I covered it up with some pretty ribbon to look like a scarf and I added two buttons and then it's cool. The person can just take it off and have some cute treats. So finally for our cute little mitten box here, I've got the, the lid. The lid is obviously separate from the bottom. And there are two pieces. You can clearly tell which one goes on top because it's decorated. And then this is the inside. And then we've got these two pieces that make up the sides. So as you can see, the shorter one is folded in two spots and the longer one is folded one, two, also in two spots. So, we just want to put some glue on the side tab of either one of them. And there's a tiny little line here right in the middle of the bottom piece that helps you line it up as perfectly as possible. And then we just want to close up the shape here with some glue on that tab. So the next thing you want to do is grab some scrap paper. If you're working on a, a table or a surface that you don't want to get glue all over. And then, as you can see, this is the shape of the mitten like this. So right here where the thumb is, we want this to be folded in a valley fold. Okay. so. We're going to take this non-decorated piece here and let's see, let me just make sure I've got this right. Okay, here is our mitten shape. You know what, this one is also a slight valley fold right here at the bottom. So here's our mitten shape that's going to go face down. It's okay if it pops out, but then we want to take this piece with the thumb over here on the right side and we want to put a line of glue. You know what, let's actually just start with a line of glue just at the bottom. And we want to glue that right into place 
inside our shape. And that's just going to it's going to be a nice anchor to start with. So that's anchored into place. And now we can put some glue up along the side here. I'm actually going to I'm going to go ahead and put glue all the way around. And carefully work this into place. around. So I'm anchoring this large tab here right by the fold. And then I'm going to anchor this piece here. And then while my glue is still wet, I'm going to flip it over. And I'm going to push down from the, the top here all the way around. And I'm going to kind of keep sliding it around so I don't glue it to my work surface. And there we go. That pretty much takes care of all the tabs. And if you see a couple that are still not glued down, you can glue those down. And then you can take your decorative, decorated piece and glue that right on. So if you would like to do stitching with, a, uh, with some baker's twine, I think it's easier if you use uh, a needle to do it. So I have some tapestry needles and I got those only because they were the largest, the needles with the largest eye that I could find at the craft store. So it's easy to thread the floss or the twine through the really large eye and then you can create your little decorative crisscross design. And then you just want to cover this with glue and glue that right onto the top. So as you can see my cuff down here, I embossed. It's actually the notebook folder by Sizzix, which I use quite a bit because it really looks like a cute little uh, sweater cuff in this case. So the same exact process applies to the bottom. You're going to put the bottom together the same exact way. The only difference is uh, this is the piece that you start with and there's a little circle here to let you know this is the one you start with when you, you glue your sides together and everything, and then you're gonna work with this piece to put that together. And then finally at the end, the remaining piece is gonna get glued onto the back. So there you have it, super fun projects for Christmas. I hope you have a blast. I hope you have a Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays, Happy Hanukkah, Happy Everything. Thanks for watching, I'll catch you next time, and happy crafting. Learn more by visiting www.svgcuts.com. Don't forget to like us on Facebook and watch all of our crafty videos on YouTube. It's a world of crafty content with you in the middle. svgcuts.com, inspiring you to live creatively and beautifully. Should we do a check check? Can you hear me? Mic check. Hey everyone, this is Mary from SVG Cuts. Okay. Hey. Do you want to be part of our, our project right now? I know it's terrible when you get picked up. Alright, whenever you're ready. Okay. <coughs> is she going to show her butt? No. Okay. Go ahead type things. So once you get a little closer to Christmas, you know, you're kind of done with, um, with cards and whatnot. It's more so uh, maybe giving some little treats to the neighbors or something. A little, little gift box. It's obviously it's extremely simple. We have to start over. <laughs> okay. I think the cat is too distracting. Yeah. I think when we're assembling stuff, if she wants to get involved. Oh All right, start over. Really? Don't mix that stuff up. Look at me.